So we are reading from Srila Prabhupada Leelam Rata. If you are having the book, it is the last book which is volume number 7 and you have to go to this chapter that says 1000 rose bushes. Uh, you have to go to that chapter and uh, yeah, it says 108, 108, sorry, 108 rose bushes. You have to go there. Or if you are um, if you are online, what you need to do is you need to go to Vedabase, click on Volume Two of Prabhupada Leela Amrita, go to chapter that says 108 rose bushes. This is chapter 61. Go there and then do a Control F and type dictating in that Control F. When you type control F, there will be a method to choose a word. So there, if you see on the screen here, you can see here, you just put dictate. You will come to this point and put enter, D-I-C-T-A-T-I-N-G. You put that and put an enter. You will come to the exact paragraph where we have to start reading. So today's paragraph where we will be reading is Srila Prabhupada worked from the original Sanskrit text and spoke into his dictating machine. That is where we are going to start reading today. And if you are still on, if you are on the book, what you need to do is you need to go to the page that talks about matter of body. That is the heading under this chapter, matter of body. Then you come to the point that says almost invisible. Then you go further and further, go a few pages, come to the point where it talks about in the introduction of nectar of devotion and below that you will find this paragraph, Srila Prabhupada worked from the original Sanskrit text. So I hope everyone has come to this point and uh, anyone would like to start reading? Can I read? Yes, please go ahead. And honey, have I... Yeah, the recording is started. Yes, yes, go ahead, Vinaya. Okay, Mataji, thank you. Srila Prabhupada worked from the original Sanskrit text and spoke into his dictating machine. Despite his age of 73, Prabhupada would often speak of himself as an old man who could not eat like young, young man or endure a cold climate like his disciples. Prabhupada now wrote more um, prophetical and even even bo ever ever before his literature labors as began in India um, as early as 1940 with the, with his back to Godhead, Godhead paper. Now he had more facilities for working modern equipment of dictating, translating, and printing personal assistance assistance to tend to his meals and uh, laundry and energetic train, uh, trained disciples to conduct the missionary affairs of his movement. Material things, Rupa Goswami has stressed, should never be rejected Rejected when um, uh, uh, Rupa Goswami, uh, never be rejected when they be used in the service of Krishna. Prabhupada applied this principle to his own satisfaction and noticed in one of his earlier chapter of Nectar of Devotion. Anything that can be utilized in advancing Krishna consciousness and devotional service can be used. For instance, we are using many machines for the advancement of our, of our um, present Krishna conscious movement. Machines like typewriters, um, di dictate phones, type recorder, tape recorders, microphones, and airplanes. Some sometimes people ask us why you are utilizing material products if you are if you condemn the advancement of modern civilization. But actually, we do not condemn. Condemn. Uh, we uh, simply ask people to do whatever they are doing in Krishna consciousness. This is the sim same principle on which in uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna advised Arjuna to utilize his fighting uh, ability in devotional service. Similarly, we are utilizing these machines of Krishna, these machines for Krishna's service with such, with such sentiment for Krishna um, or Krishna consciousness. We can accept everything if the typewriter can be utilized, if the typewriter can be utilized, oh, 
utilized our, our krishna consciousness movement we must accept it similarly that the dictate phone or any other machines must be used day after day prabhupada went deeply into the vaishnava literature rendering the sans um, re rendering the san, san, sanskri uh, sankit um, san it poetry poetry of vasudeva and realization of rupa goswami into modern english although ex ex externally his life may be may have appeared less event eventful he felt full uh, urgency and satisfaction that he was making his most important contribution to the world sitting uh, in a simple room in a small los angeles uh, suburban house he was was presenting the foundation of um, of for a movement that could grow for thousands of years he sensed the victory of the vedic uh, vedic enlightenment over the dark uh, darkness of age thank you mata ji i would like to stop here hari krishna thank you very much vinaya mata ji for reading in spite of your busy schedule anyone would like to read next Mataji Hare Krishna Yes Anjana Gopika Mataji you can read Yes Oh where is Yari Mataji Ha uh, even okay even Prabhupada <coughs> Prabhupada knew his disciple understood they should not disturb their spiritual master um concentrate master's concentration on his writing he is really putting out they say and they were thrilled to hear the rate at which he was translating concerned about printing his upcoming book prabhupada wrote to surupa in boston i am seriously compiling one book nectar of devotion about 400 pages therefore i am a little slack in sending text of the third canto of shrimad bhagavatam as far as the new book krishna i will continue to send you the text in other way the krishna book will be completed and the and to hamsa duta prabhupad wrote i next wish to publish a new book edited uh, nectar of devotion so if you can help with this phone it would be very appreciated also prabhupad's books writing was going well the book production work by his disciple was not uh, unpublished uh, a manuscript filed up prabhupada anticipated he had few years left and he wanted to publish as many as possible krishna was empowering him to write two books simultaneously but at the difficulty in uh, 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 scheduling Uh, the books for for uh, publication proper become frustrated macmillan company had recently finished printing 1500 hard bought uh, hard uh, bound copies and 35000 paper back copies of bhagavad gita as it is although macmillan company had uh, upraised the original gita manuscript more than 50% it was nevertheless a victory for the krishna consciousness movement the first authorized parampara edition of bhagavad gita in the west although macmillan company would distribute bhagavad gita as it is in the book stores prabhupada asked brahmananda to order 50000 copies for the temple to sell he suggested that brahmananda approach as many book reviewers as possible telling them this book was badly needed in today's godless civilization try for, try for selling these books propada wrote to the devotees in london it shall be uh, considered of the greatest service with this uh, must basic book now available Prabhupada instructed his student to read at least one chapter a day and discuss it in class if you can simply come bhagavad gita hero thamsa duta then you will surely become a very good preacher as 
examination and Bhagavad Gita should be held. Prabhupada said, and those students who passed would receive the title Bhakti Shastri, who when more books were available, he would hold a further exam based on Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, teaching of Lord Chaitanya and the nature of devotion. And those who passed would receive the title Bhakti Vedanta. I want that all my spiritual sons and daughters will inherit the title of Bhakti Vedanta so that the family um, family, uh, family and diploma will continue through the generations. Those processing the title of Bhakti Vedanta will be allowed to initiate disciples. Maybe by 1975, all my disciples will be allowed to initiate and increase the number of generations. There is my program. So we should not simply publish this book for reading by outsiders, but our students must be well versed in all of our books so that we can be prepared to defeat all opposing parties in the matter of self-realization. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Hari Bol. Thank you so much, Anjana Gopika Mataji. Mataji, are you also traveling? Uh, no, no Mataji, I'm, I came back. Okay, okay, very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else Hare would Krishna. like to read next? Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, Mataji, please. Please read Mataji. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Mataji, my son is here, Atharva. He wants to read. Sure, sure Mataji. Um, where where should we start with this most this Vijayan Mataji? Hare Krishna. Oh yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Ah. You can read ah. from Prabhupada's letters. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Six, six. <laughs> Prabhupada fretted with while his manuscript for teaching the Lord Chaitanya. Which was have to, which was to have been printed at the same time as the Gita, met with delays with at Dai Nippon Press in Japan. No, when when the printer reported that the book would not be completed until next year, Prabhupada again thought of his own press, discussing discussing his ideas with disciples, asking their opinions. He could see their lack of expertise and lack of money. Another cause for concern was the backlog of unpublished uh, Srimad Bhagavatam manuscripts. Prabhupada considered Srimad Bhagavatam his primary work, his life masterpiece. The lack of definite plans to publish it discouraged him from discouraged him and diminished his enthusiasm. He had vastly ambitious plans to flood the world with Krishna conscious books and he would be satisfied with nothing less. So in January nineteen sixty nine, while they ex- while daily experiencing the most productive period of book writing in his life, he nevertheless expressed feelings of anxiety and disappointment over the unpublished Srimad Bhagavatam manuscript. In writing to Brahmananda, the Prabhupada explained that his life was dedicated to publishing the Bhagavatam and that uh, despite having hundreds of assistants and being in a wealthy country, he wasn't able to do what he had accomplished in India, single-handedly in India. Now, one thing that I beg to bring to your notice is about the printing of my books. Uh, in 1954, I left my home and for five years I lived with Ivana Prasta here and there. And and then in 1959, I took some yes. Even, of course then, even when I was a high schooler, I was publishing Back to Goddess since 1947. But my spiritual master dictated that I should take to writing books, book which, which will be a permanent affair. Yeah. So after my acceptance of sannyas, I began working on Shivan Bhagavatam, and when the first canto was finished, with great difficulty, I published the first volume in 1962. After leaving my home and after taking sannyas and spending whatever cash money I had with me during the five years of my staying home alone. No. No. Practically in 1960, I was penniless. Therefore, uh. I had to quickly take publication of the first volume. After that, I got some money just to, just enough to pull on. In this way, I published the second volume in 1963 and the third volume in 1965. Then I began to think of coming to your country, and somehow or the other, I was brought here. Now, since I have been 
you're unable to publish the fourth volume of Srimad Bhagavatam, but what you're helping the since 1965 this one book has only been published, and I do not know what this Dai Nippon company is doing. Anyway, I am very much anxious for getting my books published. The manuscripts he, which I presently, uh, which I presently have, may be converted into eight different books of the same size, which I generally publish in uh, 400 pages. But I do not know how I'll get them published. <clears throat> Whatever is done is done. <clears throat> I am now very much serious about printing my books. <clears throat> There may be three sources for their printing. One source is that if the Macmillan Company is interested to publish my books, that would be a great relief. I do not mind for the profit concern, but I want to see them published. Mm-hmm. Another source is Ma- is if Macmillan isn't interested, we can get them printed by Dai Nippon. Uh, but the delaying procedure of this company in Japan is not very encouraging. Therefore, the next step would be to start our own press. I require to have eight books published and on the price of six thousand dollars, which is charged by Dai Nippon. I will require about fifty thousand dollars immediately. Selling or not selling, I want to see these books published. This is my ambition. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Swami. Anyone wants to read? Hare Krishna Mataji, I can read. Uh, yes, Asha Radhamataji. Prabhupada decided to restrict his weekly temple visits to Sundays. For the devotees, Sunday became the high point of the week. Sunday was the focal point of the devotees. Preaching because all week they would invite people to the weekly festival and all week Tamal Krishna would consult with Prabhupada about the feast menu or the observance of various Vaishnava holidays. Prabhupada also suggested place the devotees could perform. When Prabhupada would arrive on Sunday, everyone would be waiting for him outside the temple and they would begin singing and dancing as Prabhupada's car pulled up. As soon as he stepped out of the car, devotees garlanded him. Beside the temple hall was a little room to hear Prabhupada talk about Krishna or single out devotees and ask how they were doing. He was like a king among adoring subjects a father of a family of 60 sons and daughters. The atmosphere of the Sunday program was festive. More guests were coming than ever before in any of Prabhupada's other temples. The devotees so enthusiastically invited new people that gradually the Sunday feast attendance rose to 200. Leaving his little room, Prabhupada would enter the temple hall where he would lead uh, the singing accompanied by the devotees and guests. On one such occasion, during the Kirtan, Prabhupada began to dance in, in, <clears throat> in a large circle around the room, moving slowly, majestically, his arms raised, inducing everyone to join. As he talked, as he walked and danced, the devotees and guests lined up and followed behind him. He stopped in front of each picture on the wall and danced with his side-to-side step, his arms upraised, ropes swaying. Then he continued circumambulating the room. Among the guests, that Sunday sat uh, two old ladies in wooden chairs in the back of the room. When Prabhupada came before them, they were smiling and nodding, enjoying the show. But Prabhupada looked at them, raised his hand in the air and called, Stand up, stand up and dance. And they arose, started dancing and followed him all around the room. After the kirtan, Prabhupada would sit and watch the devotees play. Narada and the Hunter, or Prahlad Maharaj and Lord Narsimhadev, or he would watch uh, Vishnu Jana's puppet show. Then he would join the devotees for the Sunday feast. Tamal Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, would eat with the devotees in the temple room at every feast. He would instruct us to first feed all the children. He said, children should be fed first. Then we would all take. Later, after we would finish eating in front of him, he would instruct. Give him more of his and more of that. I would always sit toward the front. Then he would distribute his maha plate. Shilavati. Devotees would line up along the steps and the walkway to Prabhupada's car. Prabhupada would come out and he would be smiling. All the devotees would bow down and then kneel as he came by. And he would put his hand on everyone's head as he went by. 
Everyone was just waiting for Srila Prabhupada to touch their head. As if, if, as if he would miss someone when he went by, then that person would run around and get at the end of the line. Somehow or other, so that Srila Prabhupada would touch your head. I know he knew what was going on. He was just smiling. And sometimes he would just make a point to touch everyone's head as he went by. And sometimes he would only touch two or three people in the whole line. It was a just a game that we all played. Then he would get up in, into the car and everyone would just uh, converge on the car. Then after he left, everyone had something to say like, Did you see him to do this? And did you hear him say this? Everyone was so happy about Srila Prabhupada. We would always talk about him. He was the center of our life. Thank you, Mataji. <clears throat> Thank you, Ashray Radha Mataji. Thank you so much. Uh, who else is this? Uh, Sita Priti Mataji or Vranda Gopika Mataji, one of you would like to read? Mataji, I'll try reading. If I have <laughs> disturbance, then I'll stop her. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Krishna. Yeah. As a representative of the Los Angeles devotee community, Tamal Krishna visited Prabhupada daily. Prabhupada was especially interested in the Sankirtan party. The traveling chanting party Prabhupada had requested the Malkrishna to form to form had been holding Kirtania Kirtans on the in the street of San Francisco and Seattle. Upon their arrival in Los Angeles, Prabhupada asked them to stay as a part of the new uh, new Los Angeles Center. Now every day more than thirty devotees were going downtown distributing back to Godhead and chanting for eight hours. Besides organizing the daily Sankirtan, Tamal Krishna also maintained relations with police and city authorities. It was a success. Los Angeles was heading, was leading ISKCON in the new Sankirtan practice and repeatedly Prabhupada stressed that this as the most important function of ISKCON. Because Tamal Krishna was Prabhupada's man for organizing the devotees, Prabhupada carefully trained him in managing in managing. Sometimes Prabhupada would show Tamal Krishna a letter he had received asking for his response. Tamal Krishna would suggest a reply. Then Prabhupada would explain the particular answer uh, a particular answer this letter required. Prabhupada usually ate his lunch alone, but one day he invited Tamal Krishna to have lunch with him. When the prasadam was served, Tamal Krishna asked, How should we eat Prabhupada? Which thing should we eat first? In eating, Prabhupada replied, there is no hard and fast rule, but Tamal Krishna watched his spiritual master take prasadam, knowing there was an art in art to it. Whatever Prabhupada would eat, Tamal Krishna would eat, bite by bite. Prabhupada encouraged him to eat to his full satisfaction. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you Mataji. Hare Krishna, Sita Priti Mataji. Thank you so much for reading so nicely. And uh, Vranda Gopika Mataji, you want to read? Yes, Mataji, I am working. I can hear all of you, but not able to participate. Please, please forgive me. No problem, no problem. I'll read for a while. Sorry, I was on mute. So after eating and washing, Prabhupada said, Now let us talk a little. The printers in Japan, he explained, had agreed to take a contract for printing back the Godhead on the condition that ISKCON order a minimum of 20,000 magazines a month. They are first class printers, Prabhupada said, so you should give me a guarantee. I want you to take 5,000 magazines a month for Los Angeles. If you do, then I will arrange for San Francisco, New York, and London to each take 5,000. You just give me this guarantee. Immediately, Tamal Krishna promised Prabhupada to distribute 5,000 magazines a month. It was an important moment. Now Prabhupada said, I can take the initiative to print the big order. Otherwise, I could not do it. On another of Tamal Krishna's daily visits, he showed Prabhupada a painting just completed by Murli Dhara, a new devotee. The picture showed the spiritual sky and the spiritual planets with the material world in one corner. Prabhupada liked the painting. Referring to the painting, he explained to Tamal Krishna the plan of the total creation. 
Krishna, he began as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is situated on the topmost planet Krishna Loka. Around Krishna Loka are innumerable spiritual planets, residences of the four-handed Narayana expansions of the Lord. The planets are all situated in the unlimited effulgence of the Brahman sky, which is actually the effulgence of Krishna's body. And in one tiny corner of the sky exists the entire material world. The material world emanates from Krishna's expansion, Mahavishnu, who lives in the causal ocean, emanating innumerable material universes from his breathing and from the force of his body. Within each universe, Mahavishnu then further expands into Garbhodakshai Vishnu, who generates the planets within the universe. The earth planet is situated in the middle planetary system in comparison to the entire universe and it is insignificant as a speck of dust. And yet, on this speck of dust, there are seven continents. Prabhupada continued to explain, directing Tamal Krishna's attention to the painting. And out of these different continents, Prabhupada said, there is America. And even within America, there are so many cities. And one of these cities is Los Angeles. So here in Los Angeles also, there are many places. And then out of them, out of one of them is our temple. And in this temple, there is one Tamal Krishna. And he is thinking that he is very, very important. Tamal Krishna was started. Prabhupada looked at him and simply smiled. Hare Krishna. I'll stop there. So anyone else wants to read or we can go with realization? Okay. So I invite everyone to please share their realizations if there is no one else who would like to read. Um, so I do see everyone on the call. Uh, we have uh, Vinaya Mataji, Asherada Mataji, Vrinda Gopika Mataji, Sita Priti Mataji, Anjana Gopika Mataji, and uh, Shamagauri Mataji and Ajana. Uh, so, uh, whoever would like to share their realizations, please go ahead. Uh, Mataji, <laughs> thank you so much. It's so nice. Uh, last paragraph you read. Uh, uh, how Prabhupada actually wanted to make him to realize how we are in, very insignificant in, through the Tamu Krishna Maharaj. I mean, uh, and he thinks he is important and Tamu Krishna Maharaj also mentioned in so many places that thing. And also, I just remember uh, 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 from Tamu Krishna Maharaj's book, uh, Servant of the Servant uh, book is uh, very nicely Maharaj actually. Oh my God, how he was so surrendered. He was... Uh, Following everything as it is, whatever Prabhupada was telling, you know, uh, it was so uh, nice connection. I was uh, thinking while you were reading, Amatis was reading that uh, how he was eating, what Prabhupada eating, and then he was just following, like to follow, you know, Prabhupada. And also, you know, while I was reading, I was remembering how and Prabhupada was stressed to, you know, and this one published the uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, and then uh, all the devotees should they they should read the Bhagavad Gita early, at least one chapter every day, and then they have to understand, they have to be well versed, and then when they read properly, they will they can actually fight I means uh, the other person um, means about the self realization. They can defeat to other person how the self realization, how Krishna. Supreme and we are eternal servant, and then uh, Prabhupada said, uh, when after uh, reading, and uh, after uh, and reading, we should have give the exam, we should take the exam, and then uh, finishing Bhagavad Gita, we can have a Bhakti Sastri title, and after Bhagavatam, next of instruction, next of devotion, Srimad Bhagavatam, and then teaching of Lord Chaitanya, and after. Dreaming this, we have to also take and give the exam, and then after somebody, if somebody passed, they can get a Bhakti Vedanta title, and then they can they can get the initiation. Yes, the Prabhupada was telling that a person can get the initiation, and then he can preach. He wanted to product all the students. They should read very nicely all his book. That's so inspiring. Prabhupada was telling like that. But <laughs> 
Thank you, Anjana Gopika Mathai. That is so true. These are the two highlighted points in today's discussion uh, when I felt. Uh, and I was just reminded of how uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj in this incident, right, he he also tells this uh, personally, he tells this in that uh, Memories of Srila Prabhupada recording. Uh, he personally explains uh, how <laughs> uh, how he actually felt <laughs> Uh, when this uh, incident happened, how when Prabhupada said this, he showed this, and he said there is this little the temple commander who thinks that he's the world. <laughs> so very very nice, Mataji. Thank you so much for sharing that. Anyone else uh, wants to? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes, yes, Shama Gauri, Mataji. Uh, Atal wants to share. Yes. Uh, so what I got from reading my section, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, this was a time where like Prabhupada, um, he had some good uh, early success in India, but uh, now uh, the success level win a lot more. But, but even though this happened, they had some problems like Sriman Bhagavatam not getting published and like the, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya that are also not getting published. Uh, he was hey, you're on mute now. You want to unmute yourself? Mataji? Atharva, you want to unmute yourself? <laughs> Sorry, Mataji. I was talking the whole time. Yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you were talking, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, about the challenges that Prabhupada went through. Yeah. Okay, talk again. What do you say? So, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, in the section I read, I noticed that... Um, Prabhupada was in like the biggest point of his printing career. Like he was printing faster than he had ever been printing before. Yet uh, he was really anxious because he was having problems like printing some Bhagavatam and printing some other books like teaching the Lord Chaitanya. Uh, so um, this like shows his dedication and his like ambition to uh, flood the world the consciousness with all his books because he was uh, he knew his time when this world was less so he would settle for nothing less than having everything being printed at the fastest rate this shows the dedication Hari very beautiful thank you thank you Atharva that was so beautiful thank you Hi Krishna Mataji. And that's so Mataji, what when I was like I joined late, but then when we read that uh, line over there says that uh, Tamal Krishna was uh, Prabhupada's man. So uh, like what I have seen like living living in this community in Dallas, like I think Srila Prabhupada had trained his disciples so well, whether in book distribution, whether in the administration that it just reflects over here in this community. Like when I we read that uh, Tamal Krishna had managed everything, the police and everything, right? So whenever there is any uh, any temple or anything comes up, the local authorities and the local people are also to be taken into consideration. So that, that thing was so well managed by Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Mm -hmm. That over here when we see now also, that just gets reflected because his teachings mm -hmm are Srila Prabhupada's teachings and they are just followed over here by the temple president also. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. uh, Srila Prabhupada has made his disciples so profound in his the philosophy that they cannot go wrong anywhere. So like the basic understanding is if you just understand Srila Prabhupada's and teachings, nothing can go wrong anywhere. And I just found this very important, Mataji. Very, very nicely said. And uh, yes, uh, I also was kind of attracted to that point of how Tamal Krishna Maharaj was taking care of these things because these things are very, very important. 
and how he was directly trained by Prabhupada. He was in fact getting trained even how to eat. Uh, I mean, like he wanted to get trained how to eat. But the way he would very loyally follow Prabhupada, and that is reflected in both the temples, in both the Houston and Dallas communities, which are extremely successful, um, because uh, we know that it was completely under the direction of uh, Srila Kamal Krishna Maharaj. So we can see the potency in both these communities, how it works even to this day. Very, very systematic, very nice, very nice, Mataji. Thank you so much for sharing. And this just tells us, like, uh, uh, we have we have heard in Tashila Prabhupada's books, right, that in front of a guru you should be a fool, no mm. matter what qualification you are. Like, just imagine Tamar Krishna Goswami Maharaj imitating how to eat. Eat. <laughs> it is such a small thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You think, no, I know everything. Everything stops over there itself. So it's really so much to know from each and every line of the Lilamrita. I remember in the uh, one of the classes of uh, in the Kirtan 50, I couldn't mm-hmm. attend the classes, but I was in the Pujari room. But then mm-hmm. uh, Giriraj Maharaj emphasized more that if you want to understand uh, uh, Shri Prabhupada's mission, if you understand his call, you have to read Lilamrita. I was mm-hmm. so eager to tell him that, yes, we are reading Lilamrita. <laughs> that day itself, in the temple room, I think four or five sets of Lilamrita were, were <laughs> taken by yes. devotees. Yes, yes. Because when you were, uh, you it were was telling, so nice. Yes, Mataji, please continue, Mataji. Janaka, Mataji. No, no. When you were telling, he <laughs> was uh, in IIT, so when he read Lamjita, and then only after that, only he understand. So, um, uh, about this, can even he himself was telling us. Yes? Mm. So many devotees, uh, also they understand after reading Lamjita, what this can mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, even I was thinking same Mataji, reading in the conference. Yeah, thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so nice, so nice, so nice. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji, for taking effort to put up this Lilamjata every time and also the screen so that we can read it. It's really a lot of effort from all of you. Thank you, yeah. Mataji. Thank you so much. Yes, all the people who do it every week, definitely. Yes, so prayer. Everybody, everybody. Everyone takes turns. Yes. yes, yes. Yes, Mataji. Uh, Sita Priya Dasi and uh, uh, Anjana Gupta and Vilashini Gopi. Uh, and specially, specially Koti Koti Danvat Madam to all of you and our, our Shushupaya Gopi. Because of her, be honest, Mataji. I am in this moment from 19 years, but be honest. I never ever touched Srila Prabhupada Amruta. And mm-hmm. when I start to read Srila Prabhupada Amruta, Mataji, it's effect to direct our japa. And uh, it is really, and uh, yes, Mataji, Shukriya Gopi is uh, uh, because of her interest and because of her presentation. Every time, last presentation uh, I never miss. So that all credits goes to her. We all become, at least me becomes easier to read Srila Prabhupada Amruta. Still not every day. But at least Friday, <laughs> Mataji, <laughs> I repeat that class again. <laughs> that much easier. And Mataji, yes, Sila Prabhupada wants to teach us a lesson and by the um, message, by the sincerity of Tamba Krishna Maharaj, that uh, Tamba Krishna Maharaj uh, give a lesson to all our Maharaj, Bhakti Sish Maharaj, whether it's Bhakti Tiras Maharaj, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Virenchar Maharaj, Rajanath Maharaj, um, or Govind Maharaj. Uh, uh, Indadhanu Maharaj, that how sincere they are in a, uh, bhakti and um, ha, uh, ha, how they know the um, solve the problem in a provocation, uh, provoking situation, mm. how patients have to behave uh, uh, when when the, there is misunderstanding between two counselors or two presidents or in a GBC Maharaj, so that. Uh, the, the fundamental is Srila Prabhupada make us so strong, Mataji, so strong <laughs> that he the one Maharaj Nisapal to that uh, uh, that area uh, counselor and that Bhakti Ruksha, uh, Bhakti Ruksha counselor and Mataji, one one Vaishnava. I'm eagerly listening to Priya Mataji. How sincere, like a spiritual mom they are. Uh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, throwing spiritual bomb and that sincerity we can see whether it's mm-hmm. Jaitanya Maharaj Vishapal or whether it's Radhanath Maharaj Vishapal or whether Nirinjit Maharaj or whether it's Gopakrishna Maharaj. But how sincere they are. We mm-hmm. learn from each 
in every Vaishnava. Uh, little Anjana Gopi's daughter or Zarima, we learn the lesson, Mataji. Thank you very much, Mataji. That all Vaishnava teacher lesson every time to us. And I never mm-hmm. ever forget Supriya Mataji's dedication because of her. Yes. I take to hear Sri Prabhupada Amruta and little read, not every day, once in a week, 15 weeks start. But Mataji, <laughs> yes, it is improving our sadhana. Definitely, definitely, definitely. We are missing her so much today. <laughs> very true, very true. I'm talking my Gopina at home, Mataji. <laughs> huh? She is coming my Gopina at home, Mataji. She is coming? Oh, when? I thought she is already there, right? Ah, she is uh, there yesterday we talked, but she is coming mm-hmm. Sunday and Monday to my home. Oh, Jai Ho. Very nice. Send pictures, Mataji. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Thank you for sharing your heart. And whatever you said, every word is very, very true. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Ashe Radha, Mataji. Yes. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much for uh, putting so much effort uh, and uh, like making us read Leela Amrita. It's so nice, Mataji. Otherwise, uh, I was not able to read by myself ever. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yes, Mataji. So, Mataji, from today's uh, reading, um, just like few things, uh, already like Mataji has already discussed uh, most of the things like, but when we started reading, Mataji, we started with the using of the machines, Mataji, like the mm. typewriters mm. and everything like, and how people like saying that like we condemn this modern civilization. So, Prabhupada wanted to say that we don't condemn, it's like we use this for Krishna's uh, like service. That is the main aim of our life. Like we use all these things for yes. Krishna's service. So, yeah, we have to understand this, like, it's really, uh, many times we have so many gadgets, but if it is not used for Krishna's service, then we u- mis- misuse it, actually. So, that is very important, Mataji. Like, now we are using this conference call. This is also, like, uh, <laughs> some modern, uh, this, uh, like, something, but it's still, like, because of all of your the Vaishnavas mercy, we are using it for association and um, getting our sadhana more and more nicely. So, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I was also thinking about you. Uh, you are also using it so nicely to do all the Hindi translations. I mean, the Hindi recitals. Uh, yes. Very, very good, Mataji. And this is something for it is going to benefit thousands of people. Thousands of people. You have started it small, but believe me, in the future, it's going to benefit so many people. It's all your guidance and Mataji, all your uh, motivation, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. You and Lalitangi, Mataji, always uh, you give so much inspiration to, to me, Mataji. <laughs> yes, Mataji. Yeah. So, and also, Mataji, I like uh, like when uh, all the devotees, when Vishla Prabhupada used to come to the Sunday programs and they used to be like just on the row to get the mercy by on his hand, who touched his, uh, uh, like, mm. uh, it's like they are like struggling with all these things like it's really so nice with getting the uh, like uh, the mercy of spiritual master like that like it's so uh, like very personal but yes, yes like um, very nice like very uh, very like very nice Mataji. yes <laughs> even i like that yeah it was very beautiful as you said how for everyone Prabhupada was the center of their life they were he was the biggest hero they were all like waiting for every minute to be with Prabhupada and saying Whose head he will touch? <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> and I like the instruction of Prabhupada, like directly say, just cram the Bhagavad Gita. And if you do huh. that, you will be the preacher. Like, yes. he's so strong in his words. Like, and still we are seeing that after so many years, like, uh, there are like, uh, how the our ISKCON movement is going so fast, uh, how with the basic of the Prabhupada books, like, uh, we can actually, uh, go, like, the, all the preachers are going everywhere with the uh, knowledge of these Shastras, Mataji, how everything mm. is growing so nicely and Krishna's mercy. So Prabhupada knew actually everything that, uh, and that's why he gives these instructions so nicely and, uh, Whoever follows, then it's like just a boon. Hari <laughs> <laughs> bol. Jai. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Ashkarada, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think everyone shared. It was so nice. The reading was so beautiful. And I think all the points, are all the important chief points were being shared. And uh, uh, how Prabhupada, uh, just a few more things that I wanted to highlight is uh, how Prabhupada said there are three options. One is uh, to go with this um, Macmillan, 
otherwise do the dinepon but he was not happy so much with dinepon because of the delays but he thought of his own press and finally today we know we have the bakkevedanta press which does all the prabhupad books and uh, publishes so many books one more interesting point i saw was uh, how he was talk- uh, i think anjana gopi kamata ji also mentioned this about how he was talking about reading his book systematically and the importance of reading it and how we should give titles or uh, uh for people who have uh, completed the reading so that's why the bhakti shastri is there today the bhakti vaibhav the bhakti vedanta all that is there even today and of course uh, beyond that is the bhakti sarobhama and other titles but i really don't know who's getting it but at least bhakti shastri we know has now become a fundamental thing for uh, brahman initiations at least so that's very nice because it's very important to as a, a, we read in chaitanya charitamrita how um if you have to really i mean it is important it is important to know siddhanta so how prabhupad he's put in so much effort in his books and in fact at one point like when atharva was reading he's telling his own life he's telling how he took one prashta how he suffered to actually um those few years where he was literally in poverty he was writing these books and trying to get it published um who will do all this and after doing all this uh, the only thing he requires us to do is just publish these books more and more distribute them and read them so that is the most basic service we can do to prabhupad and uh, even he had a vision even for that how you can do the service you can do it by so many ways you read it systematically you read it like this you read it like that uh, do bhagavad gita do act of devotion act of instruction chaitanya i mean uh, bhagavatam Uh, especially bhagavatam is his life work so he he is given so much importance to bhagavatam so it's so beautiful it's so beautiful how much prabhupad has given to the world and at one point i think he even says that uh, this is the only uh, uh, bha- shri uh, regarding as bhagavad gita at one point he says this is the only bhagavad gita that is there strictly adhering to parampara in the western world in english so it is so important to publish this book so just when we go just take a flashback and see how much prabhupad went through to get all this it is just so amazing and we feel so grateful but today everything is available in surplus we have veda based online what more facilities do we need so really i feel uh, every time at least telling myself that there is no excuses not to read these books he has given his life and soul to this so yeah everyone should become serious that's what he says in one place and yes i really like the tamal krishna maharaj was uh, 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 trying to be uh, see and one more thing i was thinking is when tamal krishna maharaj was getting so much attention from prabhupad and when he was so close to prabhupad prabhupad would sometimes call him to his room while eating and all that but prabhupad also made a important check at that time he was so close to tamal krishna maharaj and tamal krishna maharaj was literally imbibing everything from him but the minute that prabhupad thought that okay he is now very close he is very important but now i should keep a check so he puts that check and he says that you should be very humble or don't think that you are great um, because you have become close you know that underlying message that prabhupad tries to give towards the end that was also very very nice like a typical uh, well, uh, very uh, like a proper spiritual master the role of a spiritual master is to give love and affection at the same time um uh, be very strong with the disciples so i thought prabhupad did that so beautifully and it's a lesson to all of us it's not a lesson for him rather it's a lesson for all of us and also this also i i thought was interesting where he says that shila uh, tamal krishna maharaj said that prabhupad gave instructions that all the children should be eating first and then the adults will eat actually even to this day in many temples during the sunday feast in the queue children are given first priority i used to think what is this thing that they are doing i thought because the children are restless or the parents get upset if the children are not fed that is the reason why uh, this is very common in iskon temples but today i just see that prabhupada himself says that first children should be given importance then only the rest of you should stand in queue so i thought that was also interesting anyway thank you so but, much uh, yeah i was thinking of atlanta temple i used to wonder what is this why is everyone breaking the queue and <laughs> going and <laughs> rushing in the front <laughs> now i get the answer
ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 